Any company will see to that they try to produce as close to the buyer as possible. Welcome to Battery Commodities, today all about EVs and EV supply chain. And Ursula von der Leyen, President of the European Union today, announced that there will be protective measures for the European EV car industry, specifically, of course, the three big German brands, Volkswagen, Mercedes and BMW. Now, if you look at the fact that 50% of all the EVs currently are being sold in China, I will be quite skeptical. And with me is Henrik Mikkelsen from Zurich Eredes. Henrik, what's your take on this? The automotive industry stands in front of shock treatment. We are not already in the middle of it. It looks as if everyone outside China, except for Tesla, is a little bit uh, asleep behind the wheel. And of course, this is also what you're referring to when it comes to EU policies. They want to promote uh, electric cars, but they really don't want to be promoting Chinese shops. But it's a trade-off because some of the cars are fully made in, uh, in China and actually none of the cars are fully made in, in the US or Europe. Just to add a bit of context here, Volkswagen, Herbert Dies, uh, ex-CEO, was quite closely aligned with methodology and with the approach from Elon Musk. He wanted to drive Volkswagen, the largest German producer, progress towards electrification. Now, of course, the challenge being that you lead a lot, a lot less workforce in electric vehicle production than in conventional production. Volkswagen employs about 400,000 people directly in Germany and about 1.2 million people indirectly. Even when he just indicated that he would have to lay off 30,000 people, the unions got him fired. So it's like killing the messenger to uh, ignore the news. We'll see how that all plays out. It's an interesting way to cut the fire and how how this was casualty of war, I would think. In my opinion, he was under exaggerating the situation because I believe actually that Volkswagen will lose 30,000 jobs, but not in total. They will lose this per year. That number can even go higher if we don't see that Volkswagen gets into the game because it's not to be forgotten. Uh, Volkswagen is the second largest automotive producer in the world. They swing around 9 million uh, cars a year just behind uh, Toyota, who has about half a million more. Volkswagen's sheer advances is their sheer scale. And if they lose that scale, this is going to be a problem. And this is also to be seen recently at the performance of the shares of Volkswagen. And it looks as if this starts to become reality. So Henrik, you mentioned Volkswagen being number two globally just uh, after Toyota. Volkswagen actually was number one in China 10 years ago, and now it's BYD and Geely and Great Wall of China and all the others, Neo and Xpeng. So that's definitely putting Volkswagen under a lot of pressure. And yes, there's been talks, of course, of unfair subsidies. We don't want to comment on the politics of uh, EU car subsidies here, but talking about the supply chain, where do you see things going from here in terms of dependency on China with the supply chain in the EV automotive? sector. Things are of course driven by engineering and of cost. We have educated the Chinese the last 50 years uh, very well so they now produce an excellent product and not to be forgotten it is by far the largest automotive market on the buy side so of course any company takes into consideration will see to that they try to produce as close to the buyer as possible. So Volkswagen was and still are a large producer in China and as far as I know Audi makes more cars in China than they do in Germany but even the ones that we produce here in Europe, not only Volkswagen, but it goes for everyone. China is a part of the supply chain. Screws, bolts, other kinds of components, electronics, most of them are today produced in China. And I don't see this change very much in the near future. And if we talk the near future here, that is at least five years. None of the automotive producers in the world will be able to segregate and separate them from their Chinese suppliers on different components. Because if they do, it gets disrupted in a way we saw after COVID and once again with the Ukrainian crisis, because suddenly we found out all the wiring in the European cars were done in Ukraine. And if you disrupt these things, I mean, cars are very very complex products with many, many thousand components. And none of us wants to be driving the one without a wheel or a steering wheel or a seat or any kind of component that's not even visible under the hood. We had the chip story. I mean, none of us sees the chip, but suddenly it stopped the whole production chain. So we will not be able to cut away that supply chain the next five years, if at all. Apart from the challenges uh, along the supply chain, we're also in countries that are now looking to protect these new emerging markets Take India, for example, that have put up tariffs for importing uh, electric vehicles and are insisting, for example, for Tesla to open up a production plant in India, being that this is a, a big 
potential future growth market. They want to protect their own uh, domestic uh, demand and ideally deliver a certain amount of products made in country. And I mean, we have the likes of Mahindra, for example, in India, multinational companies that are a bit late in the EV game, but given the protection that they are currently receiving on the political trade level, India will look to enter the EV race. And I think it's not only India who will be doing this. Any last nation that is on a development trajectory and India probably being the second largest after China in terms of automotive markets, they would want to do this. And why wouldn't you? You want to protect your, your, your trade balances from an economic perspective. You want to protect your working staff. You want to educate your working staff. I mean, that's why the Chinese were welcoming Elon when he started to suggest that he would open up a factory in China. And of course, this is the best thing that can happen for the Chinese because he will now uh, educate a whole bunch of engineers to do this. And you, we can see that they follow his way of thinking nearly meticulously. And India is a good example. I mean, if you go back in time, you've seen the same with Brazil. Fiat, French brands, Volkswagen have been producing cars in Brazil, still are. Some of them are producing in Mexico. All the German brands are producing on US grounds. We will keep on seeing automotive companies move closer to their clientele. And what's also uh, amazing to see is that we have countries like Vietnam with WinFast in EV manufacturer now also selling in the US, moving into the market uh, where they haven't been exporting any traditional combustion engine cars previously. So this new trend of electrification also leveling the playing field with companies entering the market that have previously not been active in the automotive space at all because new technologies and new expertise are becoming more relevant in the EV space in terms of software and uh, smart manufacturing. It's, it's a structural change. The barriers of entry are different here and in some ways they're not present. The German car industry lacks the people on the software side and electronic side because nobody can say that uh, Germany doesn't have world-class engineering, if not the best ones even. That's not to be doubted, but they might be not necessarily in the area where they will be needed in the automotive industry going forward. So I don't think it's really an engineering problem. The problem lies probably more in the decision making. So it is a managerial issue. And then all the incumbents, of course, they want to protect themselves because they've been there for a long time. They've been comfortable in what they do and they do it well. They've been nurtured and optimizing this, I mean, over more than 100 years. And uh, through that, Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, Peugeot, you name them, all of the brands. And these are just European ones. And it, it goes the same in, um, in the US.